No mai hoki mai e homa, hari tauho pākehā ki a koutou kātou. Welcome again, friends, to the series of gospel reflections that we run from the Wellington God's Word Facebook page. My name's Buckshot, and it's great to be with you again. So happy European New Year. I hope it started really well for you. I hope you've had a great Christmas season. That's been all that you hoped it could have been. I've been lucky enough to spend plenty of time with family and friends. We've made it to the beach, been for a few rides, and generally had a pretty relaxing time. And I'm now feeling ready to get back into the normal rhythms and flow of life. But then as we turn to our gospel, that freewheeling dispenser of love and compassion, Jesus comes and turns it all on its head again. This last week, I was able to watch a video interview with a man called Todd Miller. He's a reporter and author of a book called Build Bridges, Not Walls. He lives in Tucson, Arizona, under the shadow of the U.S.-Mexican War. And he's reported on that wall and the activities that happened around it for the last 15 or so years. In the interview, he told a story of one day driving down a country a dirt track, and he came across a Guatemalan refugee who was struggling in the desert. Todd gave him some water and asked if he could help him any more. The man asked if he could have a lift to the next town. At that moment, Todd was caught between everything he had been trained from childhood to do to love and be kind to another human person. Because he was caught in the reality that he knew that in the surrounding area there were border agents four-wheel drive vehicles. There were drones flying overhead. There were motion sensors to pick up activity and there were very strong cameras operating in surveillance towers which were quite possibly watching him and that man at that moment. For Todd to help this man would put him in danger of arrest and imprisonment. In many ways, not just a specific example, Kindness has been criminalised in our world. His book goes on to detail his research into border walls around the world. You may be surprised to know that this is actually a growth industry. You'll be familiar with the Berlin Wall coming down in 1989. At that time, there were six similar walls operating around the world like that wall. In 2016, there were 63 and possibly more being built even now as I speak. These walls have been built to control the flow of people fleeing war, climate change and crop failure and other issues possibly too. Back in East Berlin, psychologists who were working with people who lived near that particular wall picked up on what they began to term wall sickness, which was affecting people negatively psychologically. Todd Miller in his book contends that we now suffer from um, wall sickness on a global scale. On top of the 63 uh, walls that he has um, noted, there are also 2,000 detention centres operating around the world to manage people who are trying to cross these walls. You probably remember Donald Trump with his famous line for saying he was going to build the wall between Mexico and the US. The reality is that wall has been under construction for 40 years now by both parties on the American political landscape. Year by year, each party has been strengthening and extending that wall. It was not a new initiative of Donald Trump. Does wall sickness really affect and infect our whole global society? It's something worth thinking about. Our gospel text today comes from Mark chapter 3, verses 1 to 6. It's an interesting passage, and the text is down below if you'd like to read it. Jesus has already been to the synagogue a number of times in Mark's story about him. He's broken the Sabbath rules, and he's come to the attention of the powerful rulers of his day the Pharisees. So as he enters the synagogue today, there is a man with a withered hand there. And our text says, and they, the Pharisees, watched him closely. 
the surveillance state had come to town. The keepers of the walls that divide had come to see what Jesus would do. So Jesus asks a simple question. Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath or to do evil, to save life or to kill? He knew that the poor and the sick in his society had trouble fitting in and being accepted and giving fair access to resources. Right now, under the glare of the surveillance system of his day, the drones and border agents, Jesus asked this man to risk it all and stretch out his hand across the divide. The man did. His hand was restored. He was healed of wall sickness, as we can call it now. Of course, the Pharisees were not very happy about this display of love, compassion and forgiveness and acceptance. So they went out immediately and plotted with their political allies, the Herodians, to destroy Jesus. Forces like this still operate in our society today. Osley Grossman, in his book, Life and Faith under a Totalitarian Regime, <coughs> says at one point, Simple acts of human kindness become subversive when directed at those who are being demonised. As people who say we are friends of outcasts and sinners, the ethos of our club, who speak of the love of God for all, may we continue to walk in this way of Jesus who reaches across the walls, breaks down the divides and builds bridges of love, compassion and hope. Wall sickness is very well in our world today. You can probably see it in your neighbourhood. Let's invite people to stretch out their hands across the divides and be healed in Jesus' name. Let's take the risk to create an opportunity for the kingdom of God to grow around us. God bless you with peace and courage. Rangamārie me te kaha o te ariki, kia tātou katoa.